Hey there, everybody. Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here again with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. I am fresh off a vacation, so I may try to cram in two episodes this week since I didn't get to one last week. Um, Since I'm a little behind today, I want to talk about the expiration of the Patriot Act and the uh, quick replacement by the so-called Freedom Act. Now, both of these things are, of course, incredibly euphemistically named, um, as are most bills that pass through the hallowed halls of the U.S. Congress. Um, If you read just about any bill, they always have these wonderful sounding names that promise to bring some kind of equality or fairness or peace to the citizenry at large. Um, And that is done by design because once you actually read the bills, which hardly anybody ever does, um, mainly because they are so ominous um, and written in such vague legalese that it is nearly impossible for the average individual to even understand what they are attempting to say. Um, But these bills are written and they often have the direct opposite effect of what the name implies. Um, Now we take the Patriot Act. This, of course, came to be a few short weeks after the events of 9-11-2001. Now, to the completely uninitiated, this may seem like Wow, government in action, they moved quickly. They got this together in such rapid fashion to protect our freedoms. Um, Now, of course, if for anybody who actually pays attention, you know that Congress never works that fast because they can only agree on things when they have a bipartisanship, which, as George Carlin once famously said, that just means that you're going to get extra screwed. <laughs> um, the fact that the, that bill was raced out and passed uh, almost unanimously, I believe, I think there was only one dissenting vote, if I remember correctly. Um, means that the major portions of that bill had already been sitting in somebody's desks or some that means that major portions of that bill had been sitting in somebody's desk for months possibly years Um, you can see the same thing with the aftermath of the sandy hook incident where diane feinstein came out with her new and improved gun legislation that she actually had admitted to have been sitting in her desk for years waiting for the right opportunity. As Rahm Emanuel is often quoted as saying, although he is far from the first person to use this phrase, he is just the contemporary that this is attached to, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, This is why I say all the time that Whether by design or happenstance, it doesn't really matter because the effects are always the same. So so if you want to believe in the more conspiratorial side, or you just want to believe that these things just happen and government snaps up on them to use it to their advantage, it doesn't really matter because the end result is still the same, which is more government power. So with the Patriot Act, the you know, aptly named Patriot Act, uh, 
purposely designed to play on the emotional state of the citizenry at that time. A lot of people were upset after 9-11 for good reason. Um, I've mentioned on the Seeds podcast before that uh, I am one of those people that was directly affected. My cousin worked for Cantor Fitzgerald and was on either the 106th or 107th floor of Tower 1 when they went down, um, and he unfortunately did not make it out. So, uh, at the time, I, of course, was still a good little statist and wanted to nuke the entire Middle East, and I didn't care what happened after that because I just wanted some kind of retribution. Something like the Patriot Act comes along, and it sounds great. Oh, Patriot. Gives you a warm feeling in your in your stomach. Um, and, uh, you know, it was touted to protect our freedoms uh, because, of course, the whole reason we were allegedly attacked was because other people hated us for our freedom. Um, quite possibly one of the biggest loads of crap ever uttered by any politician. Um, and it's been rehashed so many times and still some people buy it. Um, The reality, of course, is it's not about hating us for our freedom. It's hating the U.S. government for intervening all over the world and bombing the hell out of people's towns and villages, killing their family members almost indiscriminately over the course of decades. Um, That is what we call blowback. Um, eventually those chickens will come home to roost. So we had the Patriot Act and a lot of people finally started to become aware in the years after of the spying capabilities of the US government. Many people erroneously believe that the NSA was actually created by the Patriot Act, but this is actually a horrible misconception because the NSA had been around for years, um, decades even possibly, I believe, before the introduction of the Patriot Act. Their powers were just supposedly a little more limited. The Patriot Act opened up the door for the NSA and like agencies to essentially spy on everyone, everywhere, at every time. Now, there was a very small minority when the Patriot Act first passed and in the first couple of subsequent years that were warning of what was going to come thanks to this legislation, but the overwhelming majority of Americans were swept up in the fervor of the aftermath of 9-11 and going into Afghanistan and then later Iraq and those naysayers were looked upon as crazy. Um, Just trying to gin up fear um, and that, you know, they should not be listened to. Now, of course, when Edward Snowden came through with his revelations a couple of years ago, he essentially let everybody know what those so-called crazies had been saying the whole time, that this type of surveillance that we find ourselves under currently was the inevitable result of legislation like the Patriot Act. Um, And of course, people in the mainstream, the bureaucrats, um, all the big wigs, wanted to silence Snowden in a hurry. Um, And even now, even when some of them will finally admit that he was right, There's still no going back and apologizing (laughs) to all the people that were labeled crazy. There's no mention of, oh, yeah, we probably shouldn't have 
persecuted those people as much as we did because they were right. No, much like any other time in history, those incidents are swept under the rug and hoped to be forgotten by the public at large so that the next time something happens, they can claim plausible deniability again and say, oh no, this we didn't know anything about this and, and, and this is just coming to our attention now and, and we'll rectify this and they'll figure out a way to smooth whatever that is over so the cycle can continue. So the Patriot Act officially, well, supposedly officially came to an end last Monday morning at 12.01 a.m. And this was supposedly a, a cause for celebration by many. Uh, Rand Paul had previously filibustered on this topic, and he's being championed by libertarians, certain conservatives, um, even certain voluntarists and anarchists, I know. Uh, I discussed this in a previous episode of Abolition Abstra Abstractions, the one titled, Why I Don't Stand with Rand. Um, but this was supposedly, you know, cause for major celebration. Yay, the Patriot Act is finally behind us. Yay, the government can't spy on us anymore without a warrant. Well, this on its face is ridiculous because it doesn't matter what the rules are. It doesn't matter how government presents itself to be following the rules. In the end, government is still the one enforcing said rules, is still the one interpreting said rules, and still the one passing judgment on said rules. So even now that they declare, oh, well, now we need a warrant, well, what does that add? An extra couple minutes to their day because they need to go to a judge for a warrant. That judge is paid for by the same extorted funds of the people asking for the warrant. So that separation of powers thing has always been a joke because they're all paid from the same funding, they all essentially work for the same team, and they effectively place themselves. Even if we want to believe the nonsense that the Patriot Act is over and now citizens are more free again, only a day or two later, we were brought the USA Freedom Act. The Freedom Act is a wonderful example of why bills that sound good should be just as, if not more, distrusted than the ones that just sound awful on their face. Because the Freedom Act was originally proposed way back in the fall of 2013. At the time, it was brought into existence uh, thanks in large part to organizations like the Electronic uh, Frontier Foundation or the EFF um, and a lot of other privacy groups that wanted to use the Freedom Act as sort of a bulwark against the Patriot Act. Um, since that time, however, as is with many bills that past the initial phases of Congress, you know, getting through the subcommittees and such uh, to be even be brought to the floor for votes. Um, the bill has been radically changed. Um, that should be evident enough by the people who are now supporting it the second the Patriot Act expired. All of these people that were originally against the Freedom Act back when it was supposed to be used as a way to put the brakes on the Patriot Act, uh, now all of a sudden are loving this bill. Seems kind of odd, doesn't it? Well, if you look at the original incantation of the bill, 
and then now go back and look at what it is today, they are nothing alike. Uh, this happens quite often. Uh, there has been a number of bills, and I found this out in the beginning of my journey to anarchism, uh, when I was still a little old minarchist, and I decided to start researching bills, and I found a litany of what can be considered major legislation that had been passed and brought up for votes originally, and the bill had nothing to do whatsoever with the final bill that was passed. It's basically a way for Congress to sneak bills in by bringing something completely unrelated up for a vote, having it pass, and then just having it sit there in somebody's desk until the time is right, and then it can be stripped down and reworded, and in certain cases the topic completely changed, but because it's still attached to the same bill number and it has already passed the first couple of hurdles, now it's live and in play and can be debated upon by the rest of Congress. Uh, they do this for a number of reasons. Most importantly, it usually ends up being a bill that they know wouldn't have a chance uh, in hell of being passed, uh, not only if the American public found out, but even by some of the more not so tyrannical senators and, and congress critters um, they wouldn't even let it come up for a vote so this is a way to backdoor these things in this is essentially what has happened with the freedom act because as i said it was originally drafted and supposed to be used against the patriot act and it was championed by privacy organizations that are out there looking out for the little guys like us um, but now, those same organizations want nothing to do with this bill. Why? Because it's been radically changed. But it's still purported to be the same Freedom Act that was originally brought up uh, a year and a half ago. So now, uh, I haven't actually read through the bill yet. Um, I've stopped doing that sort of thing because once you realize that they're all nonsense, that they're all filled with doublespeak, vague language, um, and giant loopholes that could drive a Sherman tank group. Um, there, there really isn't any reason to, to bother yourself with those things, at least in my opinion. I, uh, I'd rather spend my time in other ways. Um, so I haven't actually read the bill, but uh, I have gotten plenty of opinions uh, from a lot of people that I do trust and uh, the one thing that it keeps coming back to is uh, half, the, half the group says it's a, uh, a watered-down version of the Patriot Act. The other half says it's actually the Patriot Act on steroids. In either case, it still means that the Patriot Act has not actually expired. It's just been given a new name. And just like with most other bills that get passed, codified into law. Um, it's not the actual bill, it's often not the actual law itself that becomes a problem for the individual. It's the agencies that are either constructed or empowered through these bills, as was the case with the NSA and the Patriot Act. As I had mentioned, it had already existed. It was just given more teeth after the Patriot Act. It's these agencies that never go away. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's a, there's a uh, Friedman quote, uh, and he's not exactly my favorite person all the time. I, I'm not a big fan of the Chicago style of economics, um, but his one quote about the most, per one, uh, I, I'll paraphrase, you know, one of the most permanent things in the world is a temporary government agency, uh, because they're always brought up and told, oh, this is just, this is just for your protection now or this is just needed now, and once we fix the problem, it'll go away. And if you look at history, they never go away. They may change names, they may change objectives, but they're always there. So this is what we have now. The Patriot Act officially expired. It was quickly replaced 
by something remarkably similar um, and all the talk of regaining freedoms is complete BS because in the end, warrants or not, it's still the government making the decisions on who a warrant is necessary for, it's still the government making the decision to hand out the warrants, it's still the government enforcing the warrants, um, and if you think that the billions of dollars that were spent on that nifty little uh, processing center in Utah uh, are going to go to waste, and they're just going to up oh, close up shop now because uh, we're not supposed to be stealing all this information from people. You really haven't been paying attention. Uh, someday it may get repurposed for something else, but as long as that building exists, as long as there's people working there, information of private citizens will end up there eventually. And whether somebody's looking at it in real time, or just holding on to it just in case it will be there and if and when the government decides to use that information against you they will find a way so all in all the big hubbub over the end of the Patriot Act is quite a joke um, the institutions that were empowered by it still exist and those people are still out there protecting us from ourselves essentially but that's government for you fixing problems it creates by creating more problems well that's about all I have for today thank you guys for watching this has been Jeremy from the Caesar Liberty Podcast with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions peace